Hello folks and welcome on Devereaux S Plasma Desktop. Today I'm going to talk about automated backups. You may have seen some of my other videos for automated backups for different distributions. The commands are slightly different on this Plasma Desktop, but in either case I'm going to be showing automated backup to USB devices. That would be USB sticks and or USB hard drives. I'll have both today. So welcome folks. <clears throat> all of my videos are more than two minutes on my new YouTube channel, but they all have chapters or timelines. I do encourage that you subscribe and read my about section also. One of the statements that I make in there is uh, Linux is for every age. Also check out my community tab for some tips on do keyword searches since my library is all the way up to 100 videos so far. My previous YouTube channel had 450, so those tools come in handy. So again, folks, welcome. This is Endeavor OS, the Plasma Desktop, and our user for today is Mr. Bob, a fictitious user. Mr. Bob has some USB devices that are formatted with FAT32, and they're currently empty. That's a USB stick, USB 2, and a USB hard drive. That's a 200 gig hard drive. Whenever you format your USB devices, I also suggest do not put spaces in the names. Um, and if you want to keep the conventions of uppercase, that'd probably be good too. But in either case, the reason I chose FAT32 is so I can share these files that I'm about to put on here with uh, Microsoft and Mac machines also. All right, so let's talk about Mr. Bob's home folder. So again, these files are just made up files. So Mr. Bob has some document files. He has some um, Mr. Work Bob folder and some music with um, some weird names in there. I'll get rid of that one. And um, we have also pictures. And I'll resize these icons on the fly. All right, so we have Mr. Bob, he wants to make copies on either one of these devices. Well, you could do it the old fashioned way. You could go to his home folder. I'll resize these back up. And you can uh, take like documents and right click and copy the folder and paste. And then um, when you make changes, you copy and paste again and have to deal with um, some messages about if you want to merge files and all that stuff. If you want to do this a little bit smart, you can automate things. All right, so I'm going to talk about scripts, creating scripts from scratch, and I won't use too much technical jargon. And then also I'll talk to, uh, about what these are. They're similar to launchers, but they're called linked to locations. So they're pointers, in other words, they point to files. But I'm actually going to run one of them. So I'll click this one here just to let you see that folder is still empty. And then I'll perform um, this one here, some music backup. And it starts creating whatever's in this folder over to here. That's one script. And then I'll do Bob's work backup. So right now I created another folder. And all it's doing is uh, in Bob's a home folder he has Mr. Bob work and also when you do stuff like that I also suggest that you need uh, do not put spaces in the folder names because when you're writing scripts and I'm going to show that in a minute it makes it easier for your scripts to work so that's what's in that guy's folder and more importantly that's what's in here also so as I change and I already have this thing and I add a file to the original in here for instance and I create a, a document. Doesn't matter if it's a folder or a document, we'll just use a folder, it's faster. And we'll go Bob4. You know, and then you can put files in there too if you like. But uh, so that does that's not reflective of that yet. But as soon as I run this over here, it's gonna replicate that folder only and leave everything else alone. And the folder is done. There's Bob4 right there. So that's what makes these things faster than copying and pasting manually. So what does all that magic? Well, they're called scripts. So my scripts is the folder I created, and you can too. You can name it whatever you want. I started with one script and I replicated them. And then I changed the names and then I added some other information. So I started with, uh, let's take the one for Bob's work, this one right here, and open that. This is done with a text editor. This is not done with a word processor. <coughs> so your scripts have to start with um, the bin bash statement. So it's pound forward, 
uh, explanation point forward slash bin bash. When you open up your terminal, since this is a terminal centric uh, distribution, you're probably familiar with this, but uh, bash is sitting right in front of you. It says bash right there. So that's the bin bash statement. That's where bash is located, born again shell. So the next line below that is our sync. Our sync is the remote sync. Some folks like myself use it to sync uh, files and folders from one computer to another also. But I'm using it in the context of syncing folders and files to local USB devices. This one here is written for that one. If I change the tail end of that to USB 1, then that will work for USB 1. Does that make sense? Okay, you can even mix them if you like. But more importantly, I'm just using this for simple purposes. So it's uh, rsync. I do encourage that you look up on the internet yourself. There's lots of options. So it's rsync space and then an option. This one is the archive option or bit. Some people call it uh, switches, but it's the option dash a archive. Then I put in another space and then I put the tilde in there. The tilde is normally found right next to your number one key on your upper row. If you press the shift key and the key to the left of the one, it produces that funny looking squiggly line. That represents your home folder. In this case, Mr. Bob's home folder. So that becomes tilde forward slash Bob's work. That's his folder name. The name of that folder right here, Mr. Bob work. And you notice that that is spelled the same way. If you are using complex names like this, and I did this on purpose, don't put lowercase mr. That will fail. It needs to be spelled exactly like your folder. Big M, small r, big B, you get the idea. All right, so this is called source. This is the source that you're going to be copying, or syncing in this case, to something different. Where did I get this run media Mr. Bob backup? Well, let me close, uh, actually minimize this for a second. I'm going to right click on this USB device for a second and hit properties. That's where I got that from. It says forward slash run media on Mr. Bob and the name of the device is USB backup in uppercase letters. Now on some of the distributions or maybe some of the videos that you've seen in, in the past, <clears throat> they don't have the forward slash run statement on them. So if you don't put it in this distribution, they don't work. So my XFCE videos will more likely have some of that, only this stuff. So hopefully that made sense to you. So if you've only watched my videos on the XFCE distribution and you try to perform this in the Plasma desktop, you probably are going to get a failure. So just make sure that it's spelled how your particular device is listed. That's probably the best advice for you. So right click, properties. It states right there, it says forward slash run media, Mr. Bob. You can actually click to the right of this and highlight that if you like and copy it if you don't want to type it in yourself. All right, so let me go back to the script. So this is called destination. So it's going to take Bob's work and send it over to USB backup. If I change the tail end of this to that, then that's going to send it over here. And if you have a third device and fourth device and so forth and so on, all you need to do is change the tail end of this thing. So right now, I'm not going to save the, the script. I'm going to leave it alone, discard. All right, so the all backup is a pointer that goes to this file right here. That one right here has more lines. And you can put as many lines as you want. So documents, music, pictures, Mr. Bob's work and downloads is what that one's going to do. Or I should say this one. So whether you create link to location on your desktop or whether you run the script all by itself, I'm going to delete this on purpose. Walk over to the script files. If you wanted to run the script all by itself in here, you can do that without these link to location. So let me uh, do the music backup folder and uh, let's see what's in there. It's just four albums and go back to the scripts and run it directly from here. So let's like take a look at the file first and open it up in the text editor. It's going to rsync music to this USB device. I didn't have to use one of these. 
These are convenience links, linked to location. You can run the scripts directly out of folders. Okay, you already seen that. And then I can run them also from here. So if I do this one, I think that's gonna be pointing to, now if I'm not too sure what these do, I just right click on them and hit properties. And they're slightly different from launchers. This has a URL tab on it. And you can actually just go, okay, this is gonna be doing um, Mr. Bob's document, my scripts, doc backup. So let's find that script. Doc backup is this one right here. So let's open that in a text editor. And what is that one gonna do? Ah, doc backup does more than just doc backup. It also does music going to that device. All right, so that's doc backup, and it's gonna to go to that device. Now it already has one folder. So that script, or this pointer that points to that script, the script is gonna say, oh, you already have a music folder, I'm not gonna recreate it. And if you already have these albums, I'm not gonna recreate it, unless you changed something. So I'm gonna run that, and it's gonna immediately start on documents and, and skip over that. Well, not skip over it, it's gonna check it first to make sure that you match. Does that make sense so far? All right. So I can create a link, but if I wanted to add a third folder, for instance, I don't need to alter this. All I do is alter the script. So doc backup is what this is using. Let's verify that. URL states doc backup, so that's doc backup. Now I'm gonna open this thing in an editor, and we're gonna add another line. I'm going to highlight that one line. I'm just borrowing this so I can copy it and then clicking in here and pasting it. And then I'm going to change the back end. How about pictures? So if I put a small P in there, is that going to work? <clears throat> no, that'll fail. It has to be spelled the same way. So anytime you're altering uh, and copying and pasting, you also want to make sure that anytime you're typing in here that you uh, eliminate the space first and then hit one single space to make sure that you got the spacing correctly because this is incorrect. That's two spaces. One space only. Now this is going to sync up documents, music, and pictures using that little guy right there called Doc Backup Link. So I'm going to hit Save and then rerun the script and let you see that. And now it starts with pictures because I already created this, but the script went and checked to see if there was anything different from this to that folder and from the music, this one to this one. And there was no changes. So it, it immediately started backing up pictures and now it's finished. The other cool thing about scripts is this. You can uh, take the script itself and copy them. So let's take this music script, for instance, that is destined to go to USB backup one, copy, paste, one file, and call this one what it is. Music backup USB one, or you want to use um, uppercase letters, not explanation point, sorry. Held down my shift key for too long. And then here, okay, now it's finishing copying on this device here. So you, it takes a while. Again, you need to be patient. But that script I just wrote over here is gonna be destined for this device. So all I did was copy the music backup to this one. It copied even the properties boxes with it, which is the executable. However, I need to alter this. I open that up in an editor and I'm going to change the tail end of this thing to USB 1. That's how quickly you can do this. And now I'm going to verify there's nothing in there and rerun this script here. And now it starts making music backups on that device. All right, so we have uh, music already here, right? They both match on both devices. Now I'm going to walk over to here and add a folder. It could be a folder, it could be a file, it doesn't matter. Okay, now we have a hello world in my original music folder. 
It is not reflected here just yet. Okay. Now, the cool thing about scripts is um, one of these is already written for this one. And the other one is sitting in my, my, uh, my script folder that I can uh, make copies to this one. So I'm going to use that one there. It's already created. And that is a pointer to the music backup script. So that music backup script, again, is going to be backing up to that device there. So let's run that one manually. So it's finished and I have the hello world already. This one doesn't have it yet because I haven't ran a script for it yet. Since I don't have a launcher for it here or a link to location, I'm going to have to do this manually and I'm going to use that one. And now that one is finished and I got hello world here. You see how versatile this can be? And you can, of course, if you decided to go, okay, I want uh, a location on my desktop for it also, that's fine. Right click and can create new uh, link to location. Did you also know you can use this to create web-based icons? Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Any interest, drop me a line. Okay, we're just gonna call this one what it is. Music Backup USB one that way I know what this thing is going to do we need to point to the file though in other words tell it where the script is and it's going to be the USB one music backup in this case and sometimes when you're clicking it kind of jumps so just make sure that you re-verify the path and that looks proper so I'm going to hit OK creates a generic icon again you can assign it a different one I'll pick the alligator it's just as good as any. All right, so um, I'm going to delete that on purpose just to let you see that this will work. And now it starts creating. So all I did was make a custom one of these icons for the script I created that I copied originally from here to here, and I altered the, um, the information. So that one is um, pointing to USB 1. I'll leave this open and I'll open up the second one. It'll just open it up in a tab so you can compare the two. The bin bash statements are the same. The rsync statements are both uh, sources the same on both files. The only difference is the tail end, this part here. USB one here, USB backup on this one. These are separate devices. So you can tailor your scripts. You can even do it the same thing with this one. You can open that up and uh, you can put all of these things in here if you like. You can also eliminate lines. So if you didn't want downloads for whatever reason, you can just do that and save the script. So in other words, highlight the line, hit delete and save. Now it won't, uh, it won't do the downloads. This is again the all backup, which is already tied to this icon here. Or this icon is tied to this script. And you can also alter the link itself. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to actually discard it. So the backup, um, you can uh, make single lines, multiple lines. So uh, I don't know if some of these have more than one. That one has three. And these are singles. It all depends on what you want to do with these scripts. You want to copy one folder, multiple folders. Uh, that's all up to you. And then again, don't forget, if you are going to make these going to different devices, then tailor your scripts from the tail end of the destination. From the source is the source. The destination is what's also important. Where are you sending this to? And again, you can put a third device in here. All right, folks, hopefully that was understood. Creating scripts from scratch is pretty simple. Right click, create new text file. Um, I'm just going to call mine test one. Hit OK. Double click. Opens up Kate, the text editor. Don't use a word processor. Start with pound. 
explanation point forward slash bin. Make sure you spell this stuff correctly. So if you put in that, it's not going to work. Okay. Bash. And then your rsync statement. Dash A for archive space tilde forward slash what folder do you want to use? I'm going to use um, just for simplicity, I'll use documents. That's source. Now we need a space and then I'm going to cheat. Which device do I want to use? Well, how about if we use the USB one since it only has a music folder, right? So I'm going to hit properties and I'm going to click to the right of this, Mr. Bob, and highlight that whole line and copy it. And then walk over to where my script is currently paused or in edit mode and paste. I do suggest that you click behind the S though and then hit delete just to verify that there's only one space in there, not two. Then uh, don't forget to add the forward slash, the name of the device. So in this case, USB one. and then you can save that test one and you're still not done you need one more thing and the script is called test one you need to make sure that it is set for executable now you can run the script manually and it will start making copies of the documents in this case because that's what i told that script to do the music folder was already there Let's take a look at that script by editing it. It's only documents. If you wanted to um, actually make another launcher for it or a link to location, it's pretty simple to do. Create new link to location. Again, I'm just going to call it test one and use the generic icon for simplicity purposes. Always check your link first, and then again, you can assign it any icon that you want. I'll pick the orange. And what is this one only gonna do? Since test one is only doing documents, so let's, uh, instead of executing it, let's open it, open it up and take a look at it. And then I'm gonna manually delete all of these out of here. And this again is a USB 2 stick. It's quite slow compared to this drive here. Now it's finished and I'm going to double click on that and it starts creating that folder immediately. So if your USB stick has a uh, LED on it, allow it to finish. If it doesn't have an LED, then of course you're going to have to take a guess at it. A lot of times it'll complain when you try to reject that, but just give it the right amount of time that you think it needs to copy these things. You know, do other work if you like. But just allow the script to finish, in other words. Otherwise, you don't want to half cut it th halfway through your, your uh, transfer. And the cool thing about it, one more time, is if you decide to add anything in here, um, you just rerun the script. Right now, it's not reflective of that. So if I rerun that, it's not going to recreate everything. It's just going to look for changes and it'll create that folder immediately. That's what makes our sync faster the next time around. So as you can see, there's multiple things you can do with these kind of things. On that note, folks, hopefully you found this helpful. Take care.